Spike the Dragon always bragged about how good he was at photography. And all he wanted was just one little chance to prove to everyone how talented he was. It didn't take long before someone actually recommended him to be the official photographer of King Roaring the Lion's birthday party. All done and sent. Wow! That's a nice picture! Now we know who'll be our photographer. And immediately, Mr. Tiger sent a message to Spike. Oh! Finally someone recommended me! I won't let them down! I promise! And so, Spike started to train and practice some more. His pictures were beautiful! And he felt so happy! Everything went well until the morning of the party. I should train some more. Huh? Oh no! What have I done? While Spike was testing his camera, he pressed on something that changed his camera settings. Now all his pictures turned to white. Spike tried to change it back. He cleaned his lens and checked his filters. But all was in vain. What will I do? Oh, what will I do? I must go to Mr. Fox at once! Feeling so worried and sad, and with no clue what to do, Spike held his camera and flew off to Mr. Fox. Spike followed Mr. Fox inside. He sat down and started to speak slowly. You know today's the king's birthday party. Yes, and you've been hired as the official photographer. Congratulations, Spike. Oh, Mr. Fox, it would soon be condolences. What? Why? My camera. It's broken. <gasps> broken? Yes, I woke up early today and tried to check it. But I found that every picture I take becomes white. Hmm. Have you checked the lens? Yes, and I re-cleaned them to be sure. But it's no use. And the filter? Everything. The lens and the filter. Hmm. Can I take a look at it? Mr. Fox held the camera and started to check the settings. Where could I buy another one now? Do you have a professional or digital one? I don't think you'll need it, Spike. I'll go straight to prison, right? No, it wouldn't be fair to send the most talented photographer to prison. They'll all laugh at me. Are you sure about that? Mr. Fox took a picture with the camera and showed it to Spike, who couldn't believe his eyes. Wow! It's back! Hmm. What was wrong with it? Looks like you accidentally increased the gamma. Oh, I forgot to check that. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Go 
now. See you at the party. That would be awesome. With that, Spike walked out of Mr. Fox's place. He went back home with a smile on his face. It was a bright early morning. <sighs> Mr. Fox woke up and went to wash his face. Since he was feeling a little hungry, he went to prepare some breakfast. He prepared fruits, some cheese, a fried egg, and some veggies. He looked around for some bread, but couldn't find any. No problem. He'll go to the bakery and buy some. I guess I need to buy some bread for Mrs. Lute's bakery. Then I can have my delicious meal. Ah, I'm very hungry. I'm sure glad the bakery is close by. I won't be needing my car. Mr. Fox decided to walk to the bakery. He really enjoyed the early morning breeze. And on his way... Good morning, Mr. Fox! Oh, Mr. Falcon! How are you? Are you getting enough sleep? Yes, I can sleep most anywhere now. And it's all thanks to you, Mr. Fox. Glad to hear that, my friend. See you around. When Mr. Fox finally reached Mrs. Flute's bakery, he found a long line of customers. He got in line and patiently waited his turn. Wow! Looks like everyone wants bread. Slowly, the line was moving up and Mr. Fox got closer and closer till he finally reached the counter where very tired Mrs. Flutes was waiting. He was her last customer. Hello, Mr. Fox. Here you go. Hello, Mrs. Flutes. You look really tired. Yes, Mr. Fox. It's becoming more and more exhausting. Why? The number of customers has increased lately. After I upgraded both the bakery and the quality of the bread that I produce. That's great! I know it's great, Mr. Fox. But the thing is, the rate of bread production is really low. Well, compared to the number of customers, that is. But why is the rate of production low? Well, Mr. Fox, grinding the wheat takes loads of time and effort. Sometimes it takes over a day or so. That's basically why everything else gets delayed. Hmm... What should we do to solve this problem? Okay, Mrs. Lutz, I will head home now and eat my breakfast and try to think of a solution. And I'd like you to pass by my house tonight. I'm sure I'd figure something out by then. Really, Mr. Fox? I can't wait to hear your solution. I'll come by your house as soon as I get off work. Okay, see you later, Miss Lutz. See you later, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox went back home to have his breakfast. Mmm, Miss Flute's bakery is truly the best. I have to solve this problem or she won't be selling any more delicious bread. With that in mind, Mr. Fox went to his workshop to give it some thought. Finally, he had a great idea. That was a long day. I should head straight for Mr. Fox. I'm sure he would have solved my problem by now. That must be Miss Flutes. Hello, 
Miss Lutz. Come inside. Hello. Were you able to find a solution to my problem, Mr. Fox? Well, why don't you try this new invention? A new invention for me? That's right. I made it specially for you. That's wonderful. It's a grinding machine to help you grind wheat quickly. Brilliant. But how will it help me? This machine is used to increase the rate of grinding the wheat, which is used to make the bread. So you can use it to grind a whole kilogram in no more than five minutes. And with that, the amount of time needed will decrease, and you won't be too exhausted. I'm really grateful to you, Mr. Fox. I have no words to express my gratitude. Friends help each other, Miss Flutes. You're really kind and generous, Mr. Fox. I want you to start using this new device tomorrow. And I will call you to check in every once in a while. Okay, Mr. Fox, I will. <laughs> I'll be going now. Thank you again. Goodbye, Miss Lutz, and have a good night. And so, Mr. Fox waved goodbye to Mrs. Flutz. Then, he sat on his comfortable sofa. He looked out his window and admired the jungle he lived in for so long. He happily thought to himself, I love helping my friends. What a beautiful morning! Mr. Falcon should have been here by now. He was supposed to get me some sugar candies from the other side of the river. I can't cross that river on my own. I can't swim. I'd better go to Mr. Fox. He'll tell me what to do. And since Mr. Fox helped many more, she went to him and knocked on his door. Who's there? Over here, Mr. Fox. Oh, little Auntie Lou. Welcome. Please come in. Thank you, Mr. Fox. What can I do for you? Mr. Fox, my problem might seem small, and I know how busy you are, but... Don't worry, Auntie Lou. Whatever it is, we'll find a solution. Tell me, what's bothering you? Sugar candies. Sugar candies? But you love them. Yes, Mr. Fox, I do. That's the problem. The only place I can find them is by the other end of the river side, and I don't know how to swim. Well, how did you get them before? I had some friends who would cross the river and bring me some candies with them. But I can't wait for them to go every time. I want to be able to get them myself. I see. So you want a way to cross that river by yourself? Yes. Do you want to learn how to swim? Impossible. I'm so afraid of the water. It's my worst nightmare. Isn't there any other way, Mr. Fox? Sure there is. Let me think. Mr. Fox thought quickly and without delay, for there was already another way. He'll build a bridge for Auntie Lou, so she could cross whenever she wanted to. Little Auntie Lou, how wide is that river? Very wide, Mr. Fox. Hmm, it won't be easy, but let's go. Into the workshop ran Mr. Fox. He grabbed some wood and his toolbox. He put them in his jeep and hopped inside. Then he and Auntie Lou went for a ride. Little Auntie Lou, that's not a very wide river. But it is to me, Mr. Fox. You're only saying that because you're too big. Maybe you're right. Little Auntie Lou, let's get started. Finally, the bridge is complete. Mr. Fox, that's exactly what I wanted. Thank you so much! I'd better be on my way to collect the sugar candies! I've always dreamed of this!
Enjoy the candy, little Auntie Lou. After giving his friend a happy end to the day, Mr. Fox took his car and carefully drove away. One beautiful spring morning, though tired and sleepy, Mrs. Sharpie the Post Owl was on her way to Alfie's house to deliver a parcel. This is Alfie. Who is it? It's Chip, Alfie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. I sent you the new sheet music, which you have to rehearse. Of course. I will as soon as it arrives. As soon as Alfie hung up the phone, he heard a knock on the door. Good morning, Mr. Alfie. I have a parcel for you from Mr. Chip. Oh, thanks, Sharpie. I better start. Alfie took the parcel and got out the sheets. And then he went off to practice. Alfie the sea elephant was relaxing on the seashore, for it was his favorite place to be. He loved playing his violin, but suddenly the strings became so thin. And as he gave it a hard play, the strings snapped, and Alfie's face turned pale gray. Huh? Oh no! Not my violin! It's my one and only hobby! What shall I do? Hmm. Oh, I know! I must go to Mr. Fox! Alfie walked towards Mr. Fox's place, hoping that he could help and solve his case. Our star musician! Welcome! Come on in! Thank you, Mr. Fox! Have a seat! Would you like some lemonade? Yes, please, Mr. Fox! Mr. Fox came back with a glass of lemonade. He gave it to Alfie, then he noticed his violin. Oh, what happened to your violin? <sighs> I was playing by the seaside, and suddenly, the string snapped. What do you think I should do? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we can simply buy some new strings and change them. I already bought them, but I don't know how to change them. Uh, it's my first time. No problem. It's easy. Now let me teach you how to replace them. First, we remove the old string by twisting this till it's loose. Then, we pull the broken string out of its hole. After that, we twist the tuning peg on the other end and pull the other end of the string from its hole as well. See? Now the whole string is out! We insert the thin end of the new string into the hole of the tuning peg. Then, bend the string around the hole like that and fix its other end into the other hole. And there's the other string as well. Go ahead and play it! Okay! With his violin finally fixed, Alfie walked out the door. 
he went back to play on his favorite seashore. It was a nice warm autumn day. Mr. Fox was doing his morning exercises, sit-ups, push-ups, and running on the jungle track. A very refreshing start to the day. But then, unexpectedly, fog started to form, stopping any plans to enjoy the beautiful weather. Why is there fog covering the whole jungle? This is really strange. It's been happening a lot lately. I really hope everyone's all right. I should head home now. Oh, I think I should probably stay home today. I don't have my morning newspaper yet. And how would I? It's impossible to see. Aha! Wait a minute. I'll try calling Mr. Falcon. He'll definitely tell me what's going on. Mr. Fox held the phone and dialed Mr. Falcon's number. Oddly enough, there was no answer. I guess he's not home. Maybe I can reach him on his walkie-talkie. As Mr. Fox went to look for his walkie-talkie, he heard a loud knock on the door. Huh? I thought everyone stayed home in this weather. Who could it be? Puzzled, Mr. Fox went to open the door. He was taken by surprise. It was Jack the horse. He stood there holding a briefcase and looking smart. Jack was a very busy business horse. He was always rushing to keep a tight schedule. But today, something seemed off. He looked like something was bothering him. Oh, Jack, what a nice surprise! It's been a long time since we met. How have you been? Come in! Thank you, thank you, Mr. Fox. But I don't want to waste any more time. I'm on a very tight schedule. Of course. Can I bring you... I don't have time. I just needed to talk to you urgently, Mr. Fox. Have a seat, please. And as you know, time is money. Wait, wait. Hold on. First, tell me how you managed to get here in this bad weather. There's no time. I'm so busy. And I need your help with something important. All right. Tell me what's the matter. Well, it all started last week. After long and weary negotiations, I won a bid for a gold mine located in the eastern part. Long story short, a gold mine obviously contains gold. But no matter how hard I looked, I found nothing but dirt. I was really frustrated. I was disappointed. And I knew that buying the mine was a mistake. What do you think, Mr. Fox? That's really strange. That mine is widely famous for its gold. I have an idea. We go there now and see what we can do. But wait here for a second. I need to bring something that will help us. Are you sure you don't want to drink anything? Yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Fox. But please hurry up. You know that time is money, and I can't waste any, any more time. I get it. Just give me two minutes. Too much, Mr. Fox. Mm. So, Mr. Fox went to his room to change his clothes, trying to be quick. Then, he went to his workshop. He looked everywhere for his metal detector. When he found it, he took it and went back to his house, where Jack was standing there looking at his watch, with that usual impatient look on his face. Mr. Fox, why are you late? I have a really important meeting tonight at 8, you know. We're making a deal, and I don't want to waste any more time. You know that time, time is money. Time is money. I know that, Jack. But now we're wasting more time, aren't we? Right. Let's take my car, Mr. Fox. Okay. The fog had gradually started to clear away, and the vision became clearer and clearer. But as Mr. Fox was about to get in the car, something happened. What's that? What's going on? What happened? That's what we'll find out in the next episode. One stormy winter night, when most of the animals stayed warm in their beds and turned off the lights. There was thunder, there was lightning, and Woody the woodpecker found it frightening. He knew he was in trouble, for his house will soon become rubble. 
Oh no! What am I going to do? I better go to Mr. Fox before things get worse! With a nice cup of hot chocolate, Mr. Fox continued reading his book when the doorbell rang. It was winter. No one would walk in the rain unless they had a complaint. Woody, what are you doing walking around in such cold weather? Hurry, come in! <laughs> Mr. Fox, I know it's cold. And I'm sure my problems will make you feel bored. But I need your help. Of course. Don't worry. Have a seat, Woody, and I'll get you a hot drink. It must have been terrible to go out in that storm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So, what exactly is your problem? My roof. It gets ruined by the rain. Oh. I keep fixing it every now and then. But now, every winter is a nightmare. Here you go, Woody. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So tell me, what happened to your roof? The rain makes it damp. Sometimes I fear it gets too damp. It might fall. Oh, you're right. That's a serious problem. Well, will you help me? Mr. Fox knew he couldn't stop the rain, but he couldn't let Woody's efforts be in vain. There had to be another way. Hmm... I have an idea. We need to guide the water off your roof. Hmm... But how can we do that? Well, we need to visit the jungle shop. But first, we'll wait for the storm to pass. Finally, the storm faded away. Revealing a bright, warm, sunny day. I think the weather is better now. Let's go, Mr. Fox! Mr. Fox and Woody hopped into the car, and off they drove to the jungle shop. So, uh, what will we buy from here, Mr. Fox? A slope roof. A roof? But how will we transport it? Oh, don't worry. There's a new type of roof. They sell them like, um, pieces of a puzzle. Oh, that's smart! Yep. Mr. Fox and Woody chose a nice, big, red roof. Then, off they went to Woody's house. Mr. Fox got a ladder and climbed up. He started to fix the roof from the top. Now, all we need is to put the pieces together. All done. I'm coming down. Wow, it looks great. That way, all the water will slide down and the rain won't bother you again. So, uh, does that mean no more rain water will enter my house, Mr. Fox? Of course not. I guarantee it. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Oh, it was nothing. We all like living in a dry, warm place in the winter. Woody thanked Mr. Fox. For now, he could enjoy the warmth and comfort of his house. It was a beautiful morning. The sun was shining brightly over the jungle. And seeing how nice the weather was, Mr. Fox decided to go for a walk. The birds were twittering, the bees were humming, and the flowers smelled pretty. As Mr. Fox was passing by Bingo's house, he saw him doing something really strange. Bingo! What are you doing? 
I'm storing my favorite fruits to eat during the winter. But you can't just bury them. They'll soon rot. But what can I do, Mr. Fox? They only grow in the summer, and I love to eat them so much. Mr. Fox thought about it for a while. What could he do to help Bingo? Don't worry, Bingo. I think I have an idea. Really? What is it? You'll have to wait and see. I'll just run to my workshop and I'll be back before you know it. Okay. Mr. Fox went back to his workshop and gave it some thought. After calculating all the details, he started to gather the things that he needed. Then, he took his toolbox and his car keys and, of course, the glass plates. He put them all in his car and was on his way. What's all this for? It's a surprise. I can't wait. Mr. Fox was almost done, and Bingo was watching him, looking slightly puzzled. Here you go. You'll never miss pineapples again. So I can store them in here? No, no. You'll grow them in there. This is called a greenhouse. But it's not green. It's transparent. No, it's called green because we can grow green plants and fruits inside it whenever we want. Oh, so now I can have pineapples whenever I want? Yep, anytime you want. Awesome! Thank you, Mr. Fox. Glad I could help. Here, this is for you, Mr. Fox. It's the best one I've got. Oh, that's very nice of you, Bingo. I love pineapples. Now you and I can eat them any time we want. After helping out his friend, Mr. Fox went back to enjoy the rest of his day. One day, the whole jungle decided to celebrate their new king, Rorik the Lion. He was young, active, and picky, and known for his loving spirit. After his coronation, King Rorik moved to his new mansion and started to check it out. Great! And that's my throne, right? Exactly, Your Honor. Well, I'd better check it out. Yes, please do! Ah, Timber! That's too uncomfortable! But, Your Honor, it, it was made especially for you! 
not good enough. With a sad look on his face, Timber went to call Mr. Fox and ask him for help. Meanwhile, Mr. Fox had just finished his morning exercises and was heading back home. After a cold shower, he changed his clothes and had some tea. Then, he quickly read about the king's coronation in the newspaper. Hello? Hello, Mr. Fox. Can you please... Uh... Hello, Mr. Fox. This is Rorik. Oh, hello, Your Highness. How may I help you? I need you to come immediately. There is a huge problem, and I'm pretty sure that you're the only one who can help. I'll be right there. So, Mr. Fox quickly took his keys, hopped into his car, and drove towards the king's manor. Fox? One moment, please. Your Majesty, Mr. Fox has just arrived outside requesting an audience. Of course. Let him in. Come in, Mr. Fox. His Majesty is waiting for you. Good morning, Your Highness. What seems to be the problem? Oh, Mr. Fox. Good, you came quickly. Always at your service. Well, I was at my coronation, and I thought I would check out my throne. But unfortunately, I felt too uncomfortable. Can you believe that I'm gonna rule the jungle on an uncomfortable throne? But I hear it was carved out of the best kind of stone. But it still hurts my back. Oh my. Anyway, I've decided to design my own throne. What a great idea. But I need your help to make it as soon as possible. It will be my pleasure, Your Highness. Mr. Fox designed a new throne for the king, but the king didn't seem to like it. I know just the thing for you. Mr. Fox took his tape measure and got to work. He took measurements and made estimations. This wasn't going to be easy, but Mr. Fox was going to give it a try anyway. He hopped into his car and took off for the jungle store. Can you please try it now? Wow! That's exactly what I wanted! Glad you liked it, Your Highness! And there you have it! The new King of the Jungle! It was a bright early spring morning. Still feeling a little sleepy, Mr. Fox opened his eyes and got out of bed. Since the weather was beautiful outside and awfully tempting, Mr. Fox decided to go for a walk in the jungle. The sun was shining, the birds were twittering, it was a very peaceful morning. Well, sort of. 
Worried huh? that something terrible could have happened to one of the animals in the jungle, Mr. Fox sprinted towards the sound. Are you kidding me? You're the size of an air balloon! Are you making fun of my size, you piece of you? What? Take that back now, you... No! I'll never take it back! This was all your fault! No, it wasn't! It was yours! No, no! It's always your fault! Now, now, calm down! Oh, Mr. Fox, I'm so glad you passed by. You're the only one that could solve my problem. Solve your problem? No, Mr. Fox will solve our problem. No way! What you did was a total crime. So not true! You're the one who started it all and injured me, you big... There, there, calm down. And just tell me what happened. Please he squeeze me! Up. Slow down, one at a time. Mr. Panda, you go first. Thank you. Now I was walking heading to my house when I realized that for me to get there, it will take me 12 minutes. And I was so tired and sleepy. So I thought about it and I realized I should just lay here for a while and take a short nap. And just as I was starting to get comfortable, I found little chicklets screaming with the high speech into my ears, Mr. Fox. My ears! Can you believe that? Well, that's not a very nice thing to do, little chicklets. Why did you do that? But I didn't, Mr. Fox. And how is that? I was heading to my favorite lake, and I was walking just right behind Mr. Wicks. When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he decided to lay down and fell to the ground and squeezed my beautiful wing. And if it wasn't for my high-pitched voice, I would have been dead by now. Well, that was pretty dangerous, Mr. Wicks. What should I do, Mr. Fox? I was really tired and I needed my nap. So I took it. What should a panda do to take his nap? Can't you just wait till you reach your own house? Or at least look behind you before you decide to fall down? My house is 12 minutes away, and all the walking had already stolen away all my energy. I had to take a nap to recharge. I can't keep on walking forever. Then look behind you or sleep next to a tree or something. Why don't you watch where you're stepping? Hmm. It was a very troubling matter indeed. The little chick almost got crushed. But Mr. Wicks didn't mean it. He was just so tired that he fell asleep. Right? Mr. Wicks, answer me. Did you intend to squeeze little chicklet's wings? Of course I didn't. Were you aware that you were going to take a nap in the middle of the road? Actually, I vividly remember. I walked to the tree side first, but when I woke up, I found myself in the middle of the road. How many naps do you need per day? From five to seven, I would say. Did you take a nap before you decided to head home? Of course. Do you usually nap in between? Not always, but today I went so far from my house. I tried to hurry to nap at home, but you know, I'm too slow. Say no more. I now know the answer. Really? Yes. Worry no more, little chicklets. From now on, Mr. Wicks will always nap at his own house. Just a second. Aha, there it is. Is that what they call caffeine? My, I didn't think it was that huge. <laughs> no, no, no. It's something even better. Better than caffeine? And chocolates too. Wow! wow! Roller blades! So you'll be able to move fast and reach your house as fast as you can. Oh, oh, can I try it now? Sure you can. Wow! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fox! Anytime you need me, I'll be there! One nice spring night, Mr. Fox was sitting in his balcony, relaxing and drinking his favorite juice, when suddenly the phone rang.
He wondered who would be calling him this time of night. Hello, who is it? Mr. Fox, it's Rorik. Your Majesty, how may I help you? Well, Mr. Fox, I'd like you to come to my house early in the morning to discuss something urgent. Of course, I'll be there. After he hung up the phone, Mr. Fox went to sleep. He was supposed to wake up early. He wouldn't want to miss his appointment with the king. Early next morning, Mr. Fox woke up and went to wash his face. After that, he got dressed and was all ready for his appointment with the king. He got into his car and drove off. Hello, Mr. Fox. One moment, please. Your Majesty, Mr. Fox has just arrived. May he come in? Of course. Let him in. Come in, Mr. Fox. His Majesty is waiting for you. Good morning, Your Majesty. Hope I'm not late. No, no. You're always on time. How are you, Mr. Fox? I'm fine. And how's our little Frisky? He's fine. A little mischief every now and then. You can never get him to stay in one place. But thanks to your bracelet, we can always find him. Saved us a lot of trouble. It's my pleasure. So tell me about this urgent matter. As you know, our jungle's population has been increasing lately. Indeed. Our population has increased. Yes. But it's getting harder to summon them all to the meeting every time. Hmm. That's why I called you, Mr. Fox. I need you to figure out a way for me to reach all the animals at the same time. Let me see. I need to think this through. That's okay, Mr. Fox. But please, don't take too much time. Don't you worry, Your Majesty. I will find a solution by tomorrow. As Mr. Fox got into his car to get back home, he thought all the while about the king's request. How could he help the king with his problem? With everything else Mr. Fox has faced, this might be a slightly bigger challenge for him. Hmm, this is more challenging than I thought. Maybe a short break will help. Mr. Fox went back to his house and sat on his sofa. Since he can't think anymore about the king's request, he thought it would be great just to relax and watch his favorite TV show. Everything was peaceful and quiet. But then suddenly... I got it! Mr. Fox rushed back to his workshop. He quickly designed a new device. He carried the new device to his car and off he went to King Rorik's place. Mr. Fox, I thought you were coming tomorrow. Did you solve my problem? Yes, Your Majesty. This is a solution to your problem. That's great! But what's that, Mr. Fox? This is a megaphone. I made it specially for you. 
Every time you need to meet the animals, all you have to do is roar into it. Mr. Fox, you're a genius. <laughs> but be careful. It's powerful. So make sure that no one is around you when you use it. Of course. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Fox. You're a great asset to all of us. It's my pleasure, Your Majesty. Goodbye, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox got into his car and waved goodbye to the king. He was feeling happy and pleased. The problem was now solved, and he was able to help out a friend once more. One bright sunny morning, as Mr. Fox was having his morning coffee and reading his newspaper in the balcony, his phone rang. Who could it be so early in the morning? Hello? Hello, Mr. Fox. It's Rorik. Oh, hello, Rorik. How are you today? Not very good, I'm afraid. Why is that? My piano. I tried playing it today, but it sounds weird. How so? I don't know. Could you please come and check it out? Sure, I'm on my way. Thank you, Mr. Fox. I'll be waiting for you. And I'll be right there. So, quickly, Mr. Fox changed his clothes. He took his toolbox and his car keys, got into his car, and drove off to Rorik's place. Hello, Mr. Fox. One moment, please. Your Majesty, Mr. Fox has just arrived. Of course. Let him in. Come in, Mr. Fox. His Majesty is waiting for you. Good morning, Rorik. I came right away. Oh, you're here, Mr. Fox. Please help me with my piano. It's the only thing that comforts me. Don't worry, Rorik. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Fox started to check the piano. He tried playing a few notes. What is it, Mr. Fox? Is it broken? Mr. Fox, please answer me. It sounds horrible. It's not broken, Rorik. It just needs tuning. <gasps> do I have to buy a new one? No, Rorik. It's very simple. I can tune it for you. Really? Thank you, Mr. Fox. I almost had a heart attack. However... Oh, no. Not that word. I'm sorry, but it might take a while. Oh, it's okay. I can wait. Okay, then. I'll get started. Please, Mr. Fox. Do your best. It's my everything. Don't worry. It'll be good as new. Mr. Fox opened his toolbox, grabbed a few things, and started to work. Beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Told you everything will be all right. I can't believe it. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Anytime, Rorik. 
And with that, Mr. Fox's work was all done. He waved goodbye and drove along happily. He had helped out a friend once more. For helping each other is everything you could ever wish for. One day, the mighty eagle flew to his nest. All he wanted to do was rest. He felt bitter, he felt cold. He was really getting old. He knew he needed someplace new. So, off to Mr. Fox he flew. Please, come in. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Now tell me, how may I help you? Mr. Fox, I spent years in prosperity and glory, but I'm old now and tired. I can't live out there alone in that cold weather. Where do you live, Mr. Eagle? By the mountain top. Hmm, I see. The wind is strong there. I bet you catch a flu every now and then. Well, I didn't use to, but that's all in the past. Now I'm old and weary. I'm not what I used to be. Plus, I get so lonely up there. There is no one around to talk to, and no one to help me get better if I get sick. Why don't you come and live with us in the jungle? I looked around, but I couldn't find the right place for my huge nest. I'm too old to build a new one, and I can't really stay in someone's home. Mr. Fox kept thinking for a while. What could he do to help his dear old friend? I got it! I think I can help you build a new house. Have no worries. Mr. Fox quickly grabbed his toolbox and hopped into his car. He drove through the jungle while Mr. Eagle flew above him. He stopped in front of a tree that looked both old and firm, right in the middle of the jungle. Lots of animals and birds lived around here. What a beautiful place, Mr. Fox. Wait till you see what I have in mind for you. Mr. Fox started to work. He put a ladder against the tree and counted the steps up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. When he reached the tree branches, he opened his toolbox and took out some wooden plates. Then, he started putting them together. All I need now is some nails to make sure everything would be A-OK. -okay. We're almost done, Mr. Eagle. Can't wait to see what it will look like, Mr. Fox. Oh, my! What a wonderful treehouse! And it's all yours, Mr. Eagle. My own home. I can't believe it. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. You're most welcome. As Mr. Eagle got inside his new house and closed the door, he felt a happiness like never before. He knew Mr. Fox's idea was truly the best, for there was comfort, there was warmth. He felt really blessed.
It was a very fine day. In the beautiful month of May, Mr. Fox decided to go for a walk. So, without further delay, he was on his way. While Mr. Fox was walking, enjoying the sun on the trees, he heard a quarrel at a distance and someone saying, Stop! Please! Uh, what? Can't a monkey enjoy a spring nap in peace? Nap somewhere else. I don't care. Excuse me? You splash somewhere else. You've got the whole ocean. That's more than enough room. What's going on here? I like it here, and I'm going to stay. You stink! Bingo? Bite me. Bubbles? I gobble you up? But I prefer a healthy diet. What's the matter with you two? I'm calm and happy. I'm just simply awesome. Mr. Fox, can you believe her? Honestly, I don't believe the fact that you two are fighting in this lovely weather. You tell him, Mr. Fox. Such a gloomy monkey. All I want to do is take a nap. Such a gloomy monkey, such a gloomy monkey. Bubbles, stop that. What's your problem, Bingo? What can I say, Mr. Fox? I just wanted to nap on my hammock. But Bubbles kept splashing water all over me. And it's so irritating. As if. It wasn't on purpose, Mr. Fox. I just wanted to enjoy spring my way. Can't I enjoy the weather however I please? Of course you can. But Mr. Fox! And you too should enjoy your spring nap as well, Bingo. Finally! That's right. Go enjoy your spring sleepiness some other place. Say what now? You know what? I've got the perfect solution to your problem. Really? Yes, and it's very simple. What is it, Mr. Fox? Wait here for a second. Don't splash water for a short while, okay? Fine. The hammock was very close to the lake. That's why Bingo got water all over him every time bubbles splashed. But Mr. Fox wasn't gonna let them fight. He had the perfect solution for both their plights. What are you doing, Mr. Fox? Wait and see for yourself. Let's see. First, we'll untie the hammock. One, two, three, four, five. Now, we'll go a few more steps up and tie the hammock again. Here's good. There you go. Try it now, Bingo. Hmm, very comfortable, Mr. Fox. I love it, and the air up here makes me sleepier. Bubbles, give me your biggest splash. Whoa! Mr. Fox. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I feel fresh. Mr. Fox's work was done. First there was trouble, now there was none. For there was indeed no better deed than rushing to help a friend in need. One cold morning, while everyone was shivering in their houses, Mr. Fox woke up and went to watch his favorite hmm. team play.
Messi into the open space. Usman Dembele! Ah! He's going to win! I wonder who could it be so early? Wait a second! I'll be right there! Good morning, Woody! How are you? It's been a long time since we last met. Oh, Mr. Fox, it has been a while. Tell me, have you finished building Nate's ship? Yes, Mr. Fox. I used teak and bamboo. Nate liked it a lot. He took it out on a trip. He and his friends had so much fun. Great! Um, Mr. Fox, I noticed how beautiful your flowers look. You take really good care of them. Of course. And you know what? I'll tell you everything I know about flowers. Really? Thank you, Mr. Fox. Come in and have a seat while we talk. Okay. Woody followed Mr. Fox inside. Feeling a little cold, he waited patiently while Mr. Fox prepared two nice bowls of hot soup for them both. Here you go. Thank you. It's delicious. Glad you liked it. Now tell me, what's bothering you, Woody? How did you know that something was bothering me? I know you all too well, my friend. Okay. You know, it's really nice and warm here. Yes. Warm weather helps me think and relax. Well, Mr. Fox, I'm sure you know that I've been a carpenter for a long time now. Of course. And during the winter, my business blooms and my customers increase because I sell them the wood they use for their fireplace. Very good. But where's the problem? The problem is they're not all the same. So each customer needs the wood to be suitable in size for his fireplace. That's true. And as you know, I work alone. So I take so much time and effort to cut and adjust the wood to suit each and every customer in this jungle. Hmm, sounds like a serious problem. He looks really worried. Okay, Woody, why don't you come with me to my workshop? It's round the back. There, we can think together and I can invent something to help you solve your problem. I really hope so, Mr. Fox. Don't worry, we will. I know. And you taught me that there's a solution to every problem. And Mr. Fox... Solves every, every problem! problem. <laughs> That's right, Woody! I will invent a gigantic woodcutting machine that has the ability to choose and control the size and shape of your wood depending on what you need. What? Really? Oh, you're the best, Mr. Fox. I'm just going to need some time to build the machine. You got it, Mr. Fox. I'll go get a few things done and I'll come back. Okay, I'll see you then, Woody. Mr. Fox started designing his cutting-edge invention. He knew that is exactly what Woody needed to help him with his carpenting business. And because he was making this device for Woody, he thought he'd add a bit of color to make it all even more special. Finally! This is it! Mr. Fox's size-adjusting woodcutting machine! After finishing the device, Mr. Fox sat to listen to his favorite music, waiting for Woody, who came knocking on the door. Hello, Woody. You're right on time. Have you finished building the new machine for me, Mr. Fox? Of course I have. It's in my workshop. Let's go see it. How to thank you, Mr. Fox. I'm really grateful for what you've done. Don't thank me. I only did what I had to do. I'd better be off now to cut more and more wood. Have a wonderful evening, Mr. Fox, and thank you again. Good night, Woody. See you soon. Mr. Fox 
Fox was known for his kindness in helping others. Everyone went to him for advice, even Woody, the jungle carpenter. After being assigned the task of building a really big ship, he went to Mr. Fox, seeking his wisdom. Mr. Fox listened carefully to what Woody had to say, and in turn, promised to help him. He started a research on shipbuilding, and after hours and hours of hard work, he finally got it. Yes, I've got it! But there is something I need to check first. Mr. Fox went for a walk in the jungle, looking carefully at every tree on his path. Then he stopped in front of one and said, Yes, that's the one! Immediately, Mr. Fox took a paint bucket. He wanted to mark the tree, so he wouldn't forget which one it was. After that, he got into his car and drove off. When he got home, he called Woody to tell him that he had found the perfect solution to his problem. It only took a few minutes before... Oh, Woody, right on time! Come on, Mr. Fox, tell me! Okie dokie, come in! I finally figured it out! I never doubted you, Mr. Fox! I was sure you'd be the one to help me find an answer to my problem. Oh, don't mention it. Here you go. These are blueprints. They're guidelines that will help you learn how to build the ship easily. Woody started reading the blueprints thoroughly. He knew most of what was written in it. So he looked up and said, It's a lot easier than I thought. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Oh, um, but Mr. Fox, what about the materials that I'll need to build it? Here's a list of all the materials you'll need. And what about the kind of wood I should use, Mr. Fox? I did extensive reading, and I found out that our ancestors were famous for using teak in the process of building ships, as it's really stiff, strong, and it can also be shaped to have wide planks, which would help the ship to withstand the waves of the sea. But I... I know you don't know what teak is. Not everyone does. But come along. I think it would be better to show you the tree I found earlier in the jungle. Our jungle? Of course. Everything you dream of can be found in our beautiful jungle. Mr. Fox got into his car with Woody by his side and drove off. They headed towards the tree that Mr. Fox had marked earlier. Here's the tree. Huh? I have loads of that wood in my store, but I never knew that I could use it to build ships. I didn't know about teak either. But with a little bit of research, everything is open to you, my friend. Mr. Fox, I can't thank you enough. I'm really happy right now. I'll never forget what you've done for me. It's my pleasure, Woody. Now that I know what I should do, I'll go back and start building that ship for Nate as fast as I could. Thank you again, Mr. Fox. So, after helping his friend, Mr. Fox got into his car and drove away happily. You know, it's true what they say. A friend in need is a friend indeed. It was a bright sunny day. Mr. Fox had had his breakfast and was now out doing his morning exercises. It was then when he saw Woody, who was passing by. Ah, Woody, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. I really missed you. I'm fine, Mr. Fox. I really missed you. I hope you're doing great. Hmm, why does he look so sad? I hope nothing bad has happened. You look a bit down, Woody. Is everything all right? Are you okay? Oh, Mr. Fox, I really need your help with an urgent matter. Don't you worry, my friend. Big or small, every problem has a solution. I assure you, everything will be all right. Oh, I know, Mr. Fox. I can always count on you. Let's go inside. I'll get you something to drink, and then we can sit down and you can tell me all about your problem. Hmm. Let's go. 
Woody followed Mr. Fox to his house. There, Mr. Fox prepared something special for Woody to help make him feel better. I made you some fresh orange juice. This will help you relax and cheer you up. Oh, you're very generous. I love orange juice. Thank you. Mr. Fox, I'm really sorry to bother you over and over again, but I had no choice. Oh, no worries, my friend. You know, Mr. Fox, I'm the jungle carpenter. My business has been growing recently, and now I have many customers. Yes, you're a hard worker. You deserve it. I used to build boats for fishermen. I got famous for my skills, especially after I built Nate the fisherman, the boat of his dreams. He went and told everyone in the jungle about it. They overwhelmed me with requests. That's fantastic. I'm really glad to hear that. But Nate came to me yesterday and asked if I could build him a ship. One big enough for him and all his friends. As he is planning to go on a fishing trip. It's for a special trip, he said. Yes, I've heard about that. Well, the problem is, I've never built a ship before. And I have no clue what kind of wood I'm supposed to use. I don't know what to do. How will I build him the ship he needs without the proper wood? Will you help me, Mr. Fox? Whoa, that's a serious problem. I'm going to have to look through my books. Well, you're never too old to learn something new. I could use some time. I'll call you as soon as I find a solution. I will be waiting for your call. I know you'll be able to help me, Mr. Fox. After Woody left, Mr. Fox started his researches on shipbuilding. After hours and hours of hard work, he finally got it. Yes! I've got it! But what did he get? We'll find out in the next episode. An autumn windy day. It was Jumbo's birthday. He was dancing and playing with his friends, hoping this day would never end. Everyone ran to hide all the same, but Jumbo slipped and fell, and that was the end of the game. All the animals heard the fall, but Mommy Jumbo ran before them all. <gasps> Jumbo! Oh, Jumbo. Combo, you have to take him to Mr. Fox immediately. So, without further delay, off to Mr. Fox's house, they hurried away. Hey, Mrs. Combo, what's wrong? Help me, Mr. Fox. Jumbo is ill. Oh, please come in. You look cold, Jumbo. I'll get you something hot to drink. Thank you, Mr. Fox. We were celebrating Jumbo's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Jumbo. Thank you, Mr. Fox. But as he was playing with his friends, he slipped and fell into the pond. He started shivering and sneezing. I feared he might be sick. So I thought I should bring him to you, just in case. Well, why don't you lie down, Dumbo, and let's take your temperature. Open your mouth, say, ah. Ah. Fever, stuffy nose, red dots all over his trunk. It's definitely Sniffles. Oh my, Sniffles? Don't worry, Mrs. Combo. It's just a Sniffles fever. It will go away. All you need, champ, is some rest and just one pill of antidote. And when you're better, you can go back to play with your friends. Thank you, Mr. Fox. 
After thanking Mr. Fox, Mrs. Combo took Jumbo back home to let him rest. All right, Jumbo. Now all you need to do is follow Mr. Fox's advice and keep Mr. Thermometer under... Uh, under... Under my tongue? To find out if I'm all better so I can go outside and play with my friends? But first, you gotta... So I uh, gotta... Uh, <laughs> keep my thermometer in my mouth? Right, son. You can count on me. Now, you'll stay put and... Uh, I add... Uh, <laughs> Oh, sorry. Call me when it beeps. Hello, Frisky. How are you? Hi, Mr. Fox. Ru and I were playing and I'm about to win! Listen, Frisky. I'm going to visit Jumbo now and check on him. I'm sure he'd be really happy if you and Ru come with me. What do you think? Great idea, Mr. Fox. I want to check on him too. We'll meet you there. As agreed, Mr. Fox met Frisky and Ru at Jumbo's house. I'm coming! Hello, Mrs. Combo. We came to check on Jumbo. I hope he's feeling better now. Why, yes, Mr. Fox. Come in, everyone. Hey, Jumbo! I came to check on you. And I brought your friends along too. Are you feeling better now? Hi, Mr. Fox. Hi, guys. Hey, Jumbo. How are you feeling? Well, I feel better, but... Well, we need to take your temperature one more time, Jumbo. Is it time? It's time, all right. What does it say? Well, let's see. Your temperature is, um... Oh! Your temperature is just fine and dandy, Jumbo. You're not sick anymore. You are A-OK. -okay. Yes! Now we can go outside and play. But first, I need to tell Mom. Mom? Mom? Where could she be? She's not in the kitchen. Mom? She's not in the living room. I wonder where she is. I'm here, in the bedroom. <laughs> Mom? Are you okay? I think I might have caught a case of sniffles, too. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I'll... Uh, I'll... Uh, <laughs> I'll be fine. Now, why don't you go out and play hopscotch with your friends? I'll join you when I get better. But, Mom, I won't be happy if I go to play and leave you here all by yourself. I'll be only thinking of you. So? What do you think you should do, little Jumbo? I have to sit here and take care of you, Mommy. You always take care of me when I get sick. I'll take care of you and never leave you alone. Oh, I love you more than anything in the whole wide world, Jumbo. Now it's time to take your temperature. Right, Mr. Fox? You're absolutely right, Jumbo. So rather than go out to play, by his mother's side, he decided to stay. Who can you always count on? They're always there when you're feeling down. Ready to draw a smile and remove that frown. They make a bad day so much better. Especially if you share toys and play games together. Sherlock Fluffs? 
I'm with you, Officer Poppy Holmes. I think we're moving in the wrong direction. You might be right, Officer Poppy Holmes. I can see footsteps in the opposite direction. Officer Sherlock Fluffs! I think someone is after me! Run, Officer! Run! What do you mean? <coughs> Poppy! Poppy! You there? Poppy! I can't believe we lost the connection. Poppy! Poppy, where are you? Filled with worry, Fluff searched and searched for Poppy, but he couldn't find her anywhere. What? How come you're here? I thought you'd eventually come home. What happened to your walkie-talkie? It's not working. But we just got it. I know! I was looking everywhere for you. Aw, Fluffsy, were you worried about me? Stop it! We need to fix this thing. Do you have any idea how? Hello! You're the smart one. <laughs> But I'm not much into technology. You know that. At least take a look at it. I did, before you came. I got nothing, really. Should we go over to Mr. Fox? I think we should. Let me change first. Hello. Hey! Mr. Fox, Poppy broke her walkie-talkie. I so did not! Don't fight, you two. Show me your walkie-talkie. Maybe I'll be able to fix it. Here! But I promise I didn't break it. I'll go to the workshop and see what's wrong with it. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Sure. You really think I broke it? Why else would it stop working? But I didn't! Well, I kind of think you did. You're unbelievable! It's working just fine. I told you. Well, it wasn't before. I tried it. I know it wasn't, but now it is. See, Poppy, you did break it. And Mr. Fox fixed it. It wasn't broken, Fluffs. It just ran out of batteries. I'm sorry, Pops. Never mind. I was worried about you, though. I know. I have a wonderful brother. Brothers and sisters may fight every now and then. But at the end of the day, they're still best friends. Rose stood in front of her painting stand, holding a few colors in her hand. But things weren't going as she planned. Uh, I think I should just paint the pig blue. No, wait. Maybe this will do. Maybe I should just take some of the pink color on my feathers. Working. Maybe I should call Mr. Fox. He might have some clue about what I should do. Hello. Hello, Mr. Fox. It's me, Rose. Oh, hello, Rose. How are you? I'm fine, Mr. Fox, but I do need your help with something. Do you think you could come and meet me? I'm at my usual painting place. Sure, I'll be right there. So, without a moment to lose, Mr. Fox got ready, got into his car, 
and drove off to where Rose was painting. Oh, Mr. Fox. I'm sure glad you're here. I tried everything, but nothing seems to work. What are you trying to do, Rose? I... I, I was just trying to get some pink paint, Mr. Fox. I'm not sure that this is the right way to do it, Rose. Well, what should I do? Hmm. Do you have an empty color palette? Of course. So, what colors do you need? I have red, blue, yellow, black, and white. But I still need pink, green, orange, purple, and brown. Let me see. If we take a bit of red and a bit of white, we can make pink. Oh! It's just like magic! How about the other colors? Do you want to try? Why, yes, I would. But which colors do I use? Use your imagination, Rose. Hmm, I want to try red and blue. Okay. Wow, now I can paint my violets purple. Do you want to try again? Sure, this time I'll try red and yellow. Nice! Now you have orange. It's beautiful, Mr. Fox. But I'm still missing green. Well, let's see. We still haven't mixed blue and yellow, have we? Right! This is a really cool shade of green. Now you can paint all you want. But, Mr. Fox, what about brown? Right. I almost forgot. Hmm. Let's try orange and blue. Yes, that's it. Oh, I really can't thank you enough, Mr. Fox. Don't worry about it. I really like your painting. You do? Yes, it's quite colorful. Well, thanks to you. Now, whenever you're missing a color, all you have to do is try some together. All the colors that Rose once knew, when mixed together, turn to something new. Pink, purple, orange and green. Something she had never seen. Just imagine, if you woke up one day and all your food was gone, your house was a big mess and the oven was turned on. What happened exactly? You really can't tell. But that's what happened to our friend Giselle. It was a lovely morning, just like all others. But when Giselle arrived, she was burdened with troubles. are good. Yeah, my mom makes the best pancakes in the world. Look, it's Giselle. Hey, Giselle, come join us. Have some of these delicious pancakes. Thanks. I'm not hungry. What's wrong, Giselle? You guys, I think a thief broke into my house. What? what? Food has been going missing from my home, but I didn't think much of it. But the amount of food disappearing kept getting bigger and bigger. And yesterday, all of my food went missing. And there was a huge mess at my house. I even found the oven turned on. My house could have burned to the ground. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you okay? This sounds really dangerous. What if this happens to my house next? Calm down. Whatever it is, I'm sure we can deal with it. Giselle, let's go to your house and check it out. And so, they left for Giselle's house. They had no idea what would be waiting for them. Oh dear, what a mess. Did you not hear them at all? I heard noises, but by the time I got up, they were gone. Did they take anything else other than food? No, nothing else is missing. So how do you explain all this mess? Maybe they were trying to find their way in the dark. I think Bingo's right. They didn't want to turn the lights on so no one would see them. Yes, but there are more important things. A thief had been here last night, and I don't think Giselle had time to worry about all the dishes. You're right. These are not mine. I didn't use these. That means that whoever was here 
didn't just steal the food. They ate it all here. That would explain why the oven was on. They cooked. Okay, calm down. We'll figure out a plan to catch them. But first, let's clean everything up. They started cleaning the house, trying to help their poor friend out, while being so worried about what's going to happen next. Any idea how we're going to catch them? I have an idea. We'll have a neighborhood watch. You know, we'll stay up around the house so we can catch them as soon as they come near. Sounds great. Giselle, why don't you go and get some sleep? We'll take care of it. Thanks, guys. They all sat in anticipation, ready to jump on the thief without any hesitation. But hours passed by with no one in sight. They started to become very, very tired. Does anybody else feel a little bit sleepy? Yeah, and cold, and a little hungry. <sighs> Parrot, do you see anyone from up there? <sighs> no, no one's around. <sighs> Guys, you can go home! I'll stay here for the rest of the night. I'm not tired. Good morning. What happened after we left? Did you see them? I heard a noise from the bushes near the house, but no one was there. They must have seen me, got scared, and ran away. Wow, you must have looked so tough. How did you get them so scared? I'll teach you guys. First, you have to stand chin up, hands on your waist, and look so focused. Then, you walk back and forth, back and forth in front of the house, so they wouldn't have a chance. Don't get distracted by anything, and most importantly, carry a weapon. A weapon? Yes, these are mine! A salt shaker and a ladle? It's a pepper shaker! You sprinkle it in their eyes and then hit them with a ladle! Ooh, scary! Okay, I think I got it. I'm going to be on neighborhood watch duty tonight. I'll go get ready. See you all later! And so, with a big responsibility to bear, Bingo guarded the house, steady and aware. What are you doing? What? Where am I? Giselle's house. <gasps> what is that noise? Did you catch it? Yes, it's Zebra. He's been sleepwalking and eating all your food. Oh no, Giselle. I'm so sorry. I wasn't stealing your food. This happened before. I sleepwalk a lot. Don't be mad. I can't believe it's been you all along. That is so funny. <laughs> You're not going to tell everyone about it, are you? If she doesn't, I will. I knew you couldn't scare a thief away with a ladle. You could. You know what? I'm just happy Giselle is safe. I'll just go home now. I need some sleep. <laughs> Saturday morning. Since the sun was shining and the weather was nice, Mr. Fox thought it was perfect for a morning exercise. Ah, Piggy, how 
how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. I really missed you. I'm fine, Mr. Fox. I really missed you too. I hope you're doing great. Hmm, why does he look so sad? I hope nothing bad has happened. You look a bit down, Piggy. Is everything all right? Are you okay? Oh, Mr. Fox, I really need your help with an urgent matter. Don't you worry, my friend. Big or small, every problem has a solution. I assure you, everything will be all right. Oh, I know, Mr. Fox. I can always count on you. Let's go to my house. I'll get you something to drink, and then we can sit down and you can tell me all about your problem. Hmm. Let's go. With that said, both of them headed off to Mr. Fox's house. So, Piggy, tell me what's the problem? I keep trying to grow a plant in my garden, but it keeps dying. Do you give the plant enough water? Yes, every day. Well, how about the sun? Do you keep it in an open sunny area? Yes, I do. I plant it in my garden. Looks like I'll have to come with you to find out what the problem is. Wait here for a moment, please. So, without further delay, Mr. Fox changed his clothes and got ready. Then, they both got into the car and drove off to Piggy's house. Look, Mr. Fox, these are the plants I told you about. Little Piggy, the plant you're trying to grow is ivy. And ivy likes to grow on something firm, like a gate or a wall. That's how they grow so tall. Ivy? I thought it was just an ordinary plant. Well, you can still grow it on the garden wall. Piggy, do you have a ladder? Yes, Mr. Fox, over there. Okay, come with me. Hand me the drill, please. After drilling the holes and hammering the nails, Mr. Fox hung the ivy plant all across the wall. Now, when the ivy grows, it will find this wire to hold on to. I got it. Thank you, Mr. Fox. You're welcome. Take good care of it. After saving the plant and helping his friend, Mr. Fox took off. And that, my friends, was the end. It was a beautiful sunny day. Feeling bright and early, Mrs. Sharpie was on her way to work. Good morning, Sharpie. Good morning, Emma. You're looking good today, Sharpie. Thank you. Come in. Good morning, Mrs. Susan. Oh, good morning, Sharpie. Today's gonna be a special day. I hope so, but why? Well, we have more packages that need to be delivered to their owners on time. And there's a special package for the king. I'm on it, Mrs. Susan. After piling them all up, Mrs. Sharpie went to deliver the packages. Here's your package. Thank you, Sharpie. Just in time. Hmm, looks like delivering the next one is gonna take some time. After safely delivering the package to Mr. Camel, 
Mrs. Sharpie took off to the opposite side of the jungle to deliver a package for Mrs. Deer. Here is your package. Thank you. But why were you late? I waited all morning. Next was Mrs. Bird's package, and that was south of the jungle. That was very tiring for Mrs. Sharpie. Mrs. Bird! Mrs. Bird! Here's your package! I thought you weren't coming. Thanks anyway. Next was Spike the Dragon. Here's your package. You know, um, I never thought you'd be late. Oh, no! It's the last package I'm delivering today. I hope the king is not too upset that I'm late. Worried and a little scared, Mrs. Sharpie took off to deliver the last package. She was already late as it is. The last package was intended for the king. And after being all over the jungle, will she be able to make it in time? Here you go, Mr. Timber. This package is for the king. Thank you, Sharpie. But the king was worried and a bit upset. Why? Well, he had to wait all day for this package. You're not usually late, Sharpie. He was very upset. My sincerest apologies. I'll be more careful next time. Mrs. Sharpie was very tired and really upset. Having to deliver packages all over the jungle was no minor task. So she decided to go to Mr. Fox and ask for his help. Oh, hello, Mrs. Sharpie. How have you been? I'm not good at all, Mr. Fox. You have to help me. What happened? I've got a lot of letters and packages, and I keep flying east and west all over the jungle. This won't do, Mr. Fox. I'm so tired. Oh, Mrs. Sharpie, you do look exhausted. Please come in, and we'll figure this out together. Would you like a cup of hot chocolate? No, I just want to find a solution, Mr. Fox. Okay, tell me what the problem is exactly. I get too much letters, so I fly to deliver them. I find that the first letter should be delivered to the western part of the jungle, so I fly and deliver it, just to find that the next one is in the eastern part of the jungle. And when I fly and deliver it there, I find that the one after it is in the north. And after that, it's west again. And it's all driving me crazy. Calm down, Mrs. Sharpie. There must be a solution to all of this. That's why I came to you. I kept thinking and thinking, but they come in packages. And I must deliver them all in one day. So how can I do that? Don't worry, Mrs. Sharpie. We'll sort this out. Sort? Sort! That's it. Why don't you sort them out from the very beginning, Mrs. Sharpie? What do you mean by sorting them out? I mean, first, you should read the addresses and sort all the letters that should be delivered north together and those that should be delivered east together, and so on. And then I'd finish all the north letters together and the east and then the south and then the west, right? Precisely. That's a great idea, Mr. Fox. Thank you so much. Wait, where are you going? I have letters to sort out. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Glad I was able to help you, Mrs. Sharpie. Goodbye. Happy with the solution she got, Mrs. Sharpie took off and looked forward to a new day with her new planned plot. It was a beautiful spring morning. The sun was shining brightly. The sound of the birds woke Mr. Fox up. He changed his shirt, put on his tie, and his vest. Then he drank his tea, 
It was delicious. After reading a shop manager ad, he got into his car and drove off. Meanwhile, little Bingo Monkey was riding his bike through the jungle. He was having loads of fun. But suddenly, the bike slipped and little Bingo fell off. Are you okay, Bingo? Hang on, I'm coming! Yes, Mr. Fox, but my bike isn't. Oh, it looks like there's a problem with the tire. Don't worry, Bingo, I'm going to help you. Bingo, can you help me count how many nails I need? Of course. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there are nine, Mr. Fox. Okay, Bingo, let me count how many I have in my toolbox. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm, I'll get one more just in case he miscounted. So nine plus one. Ah, we need ten nails. That's easy. Okay, Bingo, it's all done. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. You've helped me a lot. Come on, give it a go. So once again, little Bingo rode along happily. Beatrice was a little energetic bee. She wakes up early, eats her breakfast, and checks on her honey. Then, she goes out to collect some nectar. Mmm, that smells great. I'll take some from here. Wow, that looks fresh. Here's my favorite type. And so, she went collecting all the nectar she needed. And when she was all done, she went back home. But as Beatrice came closer and closer, she could see that someone had been to the hive. Oh no! My honey! It's all gone! Who could have done this? Beatrice looked right and left, but no one was there. Sadly weeping with grief, she went to the place where she might find relief. Oh, Beatrice! How have you been? Mr. Fox! Beatrice, what happened? Someone stole my honey and destroyed my hive! Who would do such a horrible thing? I have no idea! I was out collecting nectar, and when I came back, I found... Calm down now, calm down! I don't know what I should do! Mr. Fox felt sorry for Beatrice. He kept thinking of a way to prevent this from happening again. Aha! I got it! You know who did this? No! But I can prevent this from happening again. Really? Really? Come with me. At once, Mr. Fox ran to his workshop. He grabbed some steel, some wooden plates, and his toolbox. He then hopped into his car with Beatrice by his side and drove away. Oh! See? I told you! It's a complete disaster! You were right! But don't worry, everything will be okay now! Mr. Fox started to work. He got the wooden plates and built a box out of them, which he put on the tree branch. Then he surrounded the box with steel. 
He made sure the nails went in properly and made a door for little Beatrice. Now, all done. Wow, it's amazing. Thank you, Mr. Fox. There, take this too. And what's this? This is the key to your hive, so no one would enter without your permission. Really? Oh, I can't thank you enough. Don't worry about it, Beatrice. Here, Mr. Fox, this is for you. What's this? It's one of my delicious honey jars. It's the best kind I've got. Oh, you didn't have to. Well, thank you, Beatrice. And as Mr. Fox drove away, he thought that this was the perfect end to the day. It was past midnight. Mr. Sleeperson Koala was on his way home from work. The streets were empty and quiet. He was falling asleep. He tried really hard to keep his eyes open, when suddenly the car stopped for no reason. And Mr. Sleeperson didn't wake up, as if it was the hibernation season. Mr. Sleeperson fell asleep on his driving wheel. The horn was too noisy for Mr. Fox to bear. He tried to block the sound out, but it was no use. He pulled his cap over his head, put earmuffs, but it was all in vain. He couldn't bear that horrible sound any longer. What a horrible sound! Who could it be this late at night? Mr. Sleeperson, it's you again! What brought him here this time of night? And he slept on the driving wheel! Excuse me! <sighs> Mr. Sleeperson! Hello? Hello? Oh, that's enough! What? Where? What time is it? It's two in the morning. And you fell asleep on your driving wheel in front of my house. Oh, Mr. Fox. Hello. Hmm? Oh, my. It's 2 a.m. Oh, you noticed? So how can I help you, Mr. Fox? Help me? Help me? You're the one in front of my house. What am I doing here? I don't know. You tell me. I was fast asleep when I woke up to the horrible sound of your noisy horn. Oops. Sorry. I must have fallen asleep while I was driving again. My bad. Never mind that. Could you please drive all the way to your own house without falling asleep or bumping your head against the horn? Oh, sure, Mr. Fox. Have a good night. Good night. But as Mr. Sleeperson tried to start the car, it wouldn't start. Huh? Oh, man! Oh, Mr. Fox. 
Wait! Help! Now what? The car won't start. Is that so? Can you check it for me, please? Of course! Mr. Fox walked back to the car and started to check it out. <coughs> Everything seemed fine. However, when he lowered the hood cover, he found Mr. Sleeperson sleeping in the back seat. He couldn't control his anger. He banged the hood cover. But Mr. Koala was still asleep. Mr. Fox decided to hop into the front seat and try to start the car himself. Huh? Uh, Mr. Sleeperson! Your car is out of fuel! Who? Where? Your car is out of fuel! No way! Oh. What will we do now? You have to fill the tank. Okay. Mr. Sleeperson! Wh what? Wake up! I'll fill your tank for you. I have some fuel in my house. Oh, that would be great. Mr. Sleeperson, it's all done. You can go home now. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, not again. looks really down. On his face, there was a frown. He had a cake, but he didn't care. And although it was his birthday, he said, Life's not fair. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome, sweetie. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, look who's here. It was Rue's best friends. Poppy and Fluffs. Hey there! Happy birthday! Wow, neat birthday cake! Yeah, just a normal birthday cake, traditional birthday hat, and the same old wishes over and over again. Rue, are you okay? Bad timing, huh? He looks sad. I know, but the cake is still here. Oh, stop it! We have to help him feel better! It's his special day! A little bite won't hurt? Oh, sure, the cake won't hurt, but what about my fist? Fine, fine. What do you have in mind? Let's go! Where to? I know someone who can help! Mr. Fox? Duh! In an attempt to help their friend, Poppy and Fluffs went to Mr. Fox. Only he would know what to do. Hey, carrots. Do you have any lemonade, Mr. Fox? I stopped apologizing for his behavior long ago. You know, Fluffs, he's just Fluffs. <laughs> it's okay. Come in. Are you sure it's all right? Positive. It's always the right time. It's Rue's birthday, and he's pouting. He's bored with the same birthday routine every year. So we want to make him something different this year. Can you help us? Yeah. Unbelievable. You'd think I'm quite believable if you tasted this lemonade. It's awesome. <sighs> Any ideas, Mr. Fox? Hmm. What do you guys say? I help you throw him an extraordinary party with a magic show. A, a magic, magic show? show? But who's going to perform the magic tricks? You guys will. I'll teach you. This is the best idea ever. I 
agree. We'll also bake him a cake. But he says cakes are boring. I can assure you, this one he will like. Sounds like the perfect plan. All right. First, let's bake the cake. It wasn't a very easy task, but all three of them worked hard to make this the best day ever. This is the coolest birthday cake ever! Now for the magic tricks. We need a bottle of water left in the freezer for around two hours and a plate full of ice. We'll also need some food coloring and soda. I'll get the color blue. I'll get the green and the yellow. And I think I'll get the red. We are all set now, I think. Not yet. What else do we need? Invisible ink. Huh? Fluffs and I will pour it over everything, including ourselves. And you, Pops, will give Rue this magic glitter. When he sprinkles it, everything will become visible. Cool. Let's go. Let us pour the invisible ink now. Hey, Rue! Hey! What are you doing? Just sitting here, bored. Well, not for long. Yeah, right. Well, think again. Happy birthday What's this? You have to sprinkle it around to find out. Where? First, on the table. Wow! How did you do that? It's a donut cake! Now try sprinkling all around. This is impossible! It's the coolest thing ever! It's not over yet. I can't believe you guys did all this for me! All thanks to Mr. Fox. He was a great help. I can't believe you guys. Thanks. That's what friends are for. Mom, come and see. What wonderful friends you have, Rue. Yeah, I think so too. Because of his friends, Rue's birthday was extra nice. One celebration was not enough. So, they celebrated twice. 